everybody, Sully here from Team SNS, and I am with our Baltimore AGO candidate, Jasmine Salters. Jasmine, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, but I'm really nervous. I've been watching anime and, you know, reading manga since I was around five or six years old. I started with Hamtaro and I went on to Inuyasha and just kept going on to more and more things. And my second reason is I've planned anime all the way in the future. I plan to make my own show, make my own novels, and well, I also plan to become a math teacher, but that's not part of this. I try to draw, um, well, at least at least once or twice every week. I'm usually very busy, but I always try to keep it, you know, keep the drawing influence alive. This is my picture of Heine from the Gentleman's Alliance. This is another picture I drew of my of one of my own characters. Her name's Kitsura, and she's very shy. She's like, as depicted in the picture, she's an angel. I've been working on a lot of new ideas. The main story that I'm working on right now is called Potpourri. It's about 26 teens and pretty much how they go through life. It's got action, it's got suspense, it's, you know, got drama and romance and, you know, pretty much the whole enchilada, potpourri. These new ideas I have for different books, it's about a 15-year-old girl who gets involved with a mystical cat in a quest to thwart the Black Reaper. There's another story about a 36-year-old rich hermit and his butler wins the lottery so now he's got nobody to give him food and he has to go out and venture out into the world and it's about what he finds. I noticed you have two dolls in your hand. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Yeah, um, I made them myself. This is Usane Kun and this is Groucho san. Usane, he's like, he's like a little boy, you know, a little kid. And Groucho, he's older and he's pretty mean. You know, so watch out for him if you ever run to him in a dark alley. Also, I noticed uh, these ears you made as well. These ears also took quite a bit of work. I had to sew them and staple them onto this, onto this like hair, hair piece here. Wow. I had to actually make fabric around the, around the hair piece so I could sew it on. Thank you very much, Jasmine. You have a great time at Otakon. Hi everyone, this is Diana here from Team D&D. I am in Washington, D.C. at the National Bonsai and Penjing Museum. I am here with Mr. Aaron Packard. He is the assistant curator of the Bonsai and Penjing Museum. So Aaron, can you tell me a little about bonsai? Sure. Um, actually, the first thing is it's pronounced bonsai, not bonsai. <laughs> Many people, I'm sorry. That's all right. Many people have heard from the Karate Kid movies about bonsai, but it's actually bonsai, which means a tree in a pot or a container. Bonsai. Bonsai. Can you tell me a little about the history of the museum, how it got started? Sure. The Bonsai Museum actually began with a gift from the people of Japan to the United States in 1976 for the U.S. Bicentennial. Was that the first time that bonsai had ever come to North America? No, bonsai has actually been in the United States uh, much longer than that. It, it obviously came uh, with immigrants from Japan and mm -hmm. it was practiced by the Japanese, but it wasn't until after World War II that the Japanese began teaching Americans or, or round eyes the, uh, the bonsai. Bad, bad, bad. They, they felt that it was uh, something that was more of a cultural heritage of themselves, but it was a few people after the war that felt that bonsai was uh, something that could be practiced by everybody. Bonsai master John Naka in mm -hmm. California and bonsai master uh, Yuji Yoshimura here on the East Coast were two men from uh, Japanese heritage that taught uh, bonsai in the United States. How do you get the tiny trees? We actually uh, do several things to keep them small. We prune them. So also, we, you have to keep them small. We actually have to keep them small because these are normal trees. So if you were to stop their training, is what we call it, they would then get bigger and bigger. So we prune them with scissors. We also, by growing them in a pot, it helps to, mi to limit the amount of space the roots grow. Mm -hmm. And then we also take wire and we'll wrap it around branches to help give the tree an interesting shape or curves to the branch. And all of that together 
helps to keep the tree small and looking a certain way. People get very into bonsai. Um, people can have hundreds of trees in their own collection. Oh they, my God. They spend <laughs> All at the same time. Countless hours maintaining their trees and learning about them and uh, get very involved in the proper way of caring for their trees, which can foster some very lively discussions about the right way of growing bonsai. And some people are very dedicated to the traditional aspects of the Japanese heritage of bonsai yeah. and, and feel that, that it's really familiar. If it's, if it's not the, the Japanese way of doing it, that mm -hmm. it's not the correct way of doing it. But then there are other people who feel that that's not, uh, that's not correct, that they feel that because it's an art form, people can ex use that be art creative, form and yeah. be creative in it. So it's not really limited to one group, but you can either be very, very into it or you can just have a few trees and still enjoy it bonsai. So thank you so much, Aaron, for being here with me and talking to me about bonsai. My pleasure. Bonsai, yes. Bonsai, yes. You, bonsai. Got, it, you got it right.